so we looked around and we we saw the aircraft carrier. It's the biggest ship in San Diego Harbor. It's the most impressive symbol of American power. And we said, look, we've got to get the myths about that carrier uh, out into the open and, and show people that those are that they are just myths. And we've got to tell them what it really is. We've got to say what that ship really does and not to defend freedom or to uh, protect the American way of life or whatever people claim that ship is being used for. It's hard for people to realize this, but that ship is not a naval ship anymore. It's really part of the air power that we use to attack peasants and people who live in poor countries, people who don't have any defense, so to speak, don't have a military force that can defend themselves against this kind of weapon. Uh, it's, a, it's the weapon of a bully. It's a weapon of aggression. And I know Americans don't like this word, but it's, it's the weapons of imperialism. bomb and it's a little bomb that sp scatters canisters of, of uh, little aerosol bombs over an area and it starts spraying vaporized fuel and at a certain point that, that all ignites and what happens is that, that everything in that area is incinerated and then there's a shock blast that's as strong as the blast from a 500 pound bomb and if anybody survives that then uh, they're going to suffocate. I mean, the people who can survive that will probably suffocate because uh, that explosion will just suck all the oxygen out of them. Now, these weapons are not designed to sink ships. They're not designed to attack uh, other enemy airplanes. They're designed to, to kill people. This isn't war anymore. What we're talking about is terrorism. When a, when a powerful country, a small group of men can come into a place and just do whatever they want. And I think American people have to say something about that, have to have the right to uh, to say no to that.
dollars a day to sail. And this town this town just uh No, I can disagree. Well, can you I document can disagree. that? I'm the budget director for it. How much does an aircraft attack carrier task force cost a day to sail? To fight? When it's expanding armature. Well, okay. You brought up another subject now. What? Expanding armament? Yeah. Well that's what it does. So that's what it costs. Somebody pays for all of that armament. My, uh, my only question is, why do you people have to look so weird like this one here? Uh, can't you just look normal like everybody else? Don't I look normal? Uh, see, I don't judge you by the way you look. And I'm happy, to, I'm happy to talk with you as a human being, and I think the way we look is more or less irrelevant. It's just not irrelevant. Uh, I used to be a lieutenant in the Navy, U.S. Then. And I've flown. No, I'm not kidding you. In fact, I can prove it to you. I'm retired master sergeant from the Air Force. Yeah. And yeah, that's what these wings are about. Yeah, but why upside down? Big top is the engine, and it's bicycle. Oh, there ain't no bicycle. Oh, there ain't no bicycle. that they want peace. I don't think they want to be a monarch, be a ruler of all the people. I don't really believe in that. I believe in freedom. I like my freedom. Oh, I don't know. I don't particularly agree with it. I don't like going over there. But uh, like I said, I'd just as soon stop it over there and stop it over here. If I got over here, we may not be able to stop it. I have family over here, and uh, I just don't want them exposed to it. I can't do anything about it anymore. I just yeah. have to go along. Uh, are you going to vote the election? Hmm? Are you going to vote? No. Well, you don't have to be 21 to vote in that mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Hell, you got to go. You ought to be able to vote at least. Yeah. If they want to end the war, they should stop dropping the bombs over there. And you think it would be a good thing to try to stop the war? Yeah, they quit bombing. They're pulling troops out. Why not pull the bombs out? He's telling the war to fuck up. No way getting around it. How's the feeling on the ship? What do most of the people feel? Oh, life is they dig it, but that's why us gets uptight. The people who dig it, what do they feel about the people who are trying to get a boat on the whether it's a return or not? Well, I think it's, uh, what, what can you say? Anti-military and all this, which it is, as far as I'm concerned. I can dig it, though. What are you from Yilly? No, Are you a coward? I'm not responsible. 
I just pay my taxes. I just work in the shipyard. I just load the bomb. I just fly the plane. I just pull the lever. I came back to this city because, first of all, I used to walk the streets, you know, I used to walk up Broadway. I used to take the boat from the Kitty Hawk and spend some lonely nights walking up and down that city. I came back to this city because I've made probably 15 trips to the zoo, you know, because there was nothing else to do. And the main reason I came back was because I didn't want to see anybody else go back to Vietnam. Now, I was on a Kitty Hawk in 1966 when it was ready to be deployed again to Vietnam. We were bombing Hanoi and, and Haiphong, and I just returned from one cruise. And after really searching my conscience quite a bit, I just came to the conclusion that I couldn't go with that ship. Uh, I don't want to go into a long story about what I did, but I went on a hunger strike, and I was court-martialed, and I spent some time in the brig, and I spent some time in the naval hospital. I lost a lot of weight. But I finally get out of the Navy. You go in the service, I think there's certain things that you know you're going to be denied. You're going to be den denied some basic freedoms. You're not going to be able to move around as free as you did when you were a civilian. But I think there's some things that you don't expect to be denied. And that's your integrity, and your consciousness, and your humanity. And when I found that the Navy asked me to give those up, I looked back at the Navy and said, I can't do that. I don't know about wake up. I think it's important who I've wins. been there. Who can win? What is winning? And, and uh, the there's not going to be any wiping up. There's got to there's got to be a deliberation on on what's going to be done. And People have to decide. Case, but yet they're sending yeah. that aircraft carrier to Vietnam. Uh, we still got a lot of people in Vietnam that they're they're not there by choice. They're there now. Sometimes it's not good to express your thoughts. Right, well, do you feel that the, that the constellation should be going back to Vietnam? What do you put No, these? I don't think it should. I don't think that. And you're an ex Navy man? Yeah, I'm an ex-Navy man. Then why do you think it should not go back to Vietnam? Well, I don't know. They haven't made any progress now in the last 10 years, so I don't see what the heck they're going back there. It was weeks and weeks. Do you think that Still. the constellation should go back to support the war in Vietnam? I wish we was clear out of there, sir. I don't know how to answer that question. I wish we was clear out of there. Yes, I do. Uh, we've had too much involvement. Uh, we tried to pull the other fellow's chestnuts out of the fire, France, you know. And uh, it looks like we're getting more involved every day. But I can't understand uh, the head of the government here, uh, why they're partly foxing around, why they don't, just don't get the boys out of there, you know, and have it over with. About the if, war, if it could be know. helpful in, in ending the Vietnam uh, project or war, whatever you want to call it, I'd be for it. Uh, you're against the war then? I, uh, I'd like to see it end. I think we've been there long enough. Do you think Nixon is ending the war now? Uh, it seems to me he's trying to, although it's built up to such momentum that it's doubtful to me that uh, it can be stopped in a hurry. Of course, I wish it could be. You know? Do you think it should be stopped by us winning it? by sending out the constellation to bomb Vietnam? I am not in favor of bombing anything, you know? I think we had enough of that at Hiroshima. So then... You been in the Come on, man, You're about down right out. And Gavin, I know what I'm doing on there. And these fellows in Congress, and in the Pentagon, and those that run that service, let them tell us not to have a bunch of kids come around and tell them. Don't to do that. I'm going to hit the right in the march. Right, right. I want to hit the right in the march. Okay. Now listen. One, one and question. I don't mean maybe. Do you think the constellation is going back to Vietnam? Um, shut up. Shut up. God's up, Then you are in favor of the war in Vietnam. Put that thing out of my face. Well, yes. Are you in favor of the war in Vietnam now? Now? The what? The war in Vietnam? Doesn't make any difference whether I am or not. 
what men that know about it are and back out of what goes on. Now men that don't know, don't know a goddamn thing. You, you're, out, you're hardly born. I admit that. I agree. Oh, you're but hardly born. The last, the, the last duty I did aboard ship was aboard the Valley Forge. And I was uh, rather surprised, and I'll tell you frankly shocked, she cost $190 million. And you think that's too much to spend? Good heavens, yes. On a piece of iron junk like that? <laughs> we understand the Constellation costs $2 million a day to run in a battle zone. $2 million a day. A day? Uh -oh, that rather boggles the imagination, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I, I, would, I would think that it's been proven, we've been there long enough, that we cannot achieve uh, a military victory as such. The longer we stay there, I'm sure that the South Vietnamese people would, would resent our being there. So I feel it would probably should fill out. So you don't help with the whole end? Well, I hope it ends pretty soon. It's getting pretty rough. And I believe it ends soon that everybody come home. And if it doesn't, there's going to be plenty more people that's going to be killed. I hope it ends soon. Are we going to vote the House of Lips and I don't know. Good. Hello, I'm Chuck Humphrey, stationed on board the USS Chicago. The Constellation vote concerns everybody in this city. I'm going to vote yes on the Constellation staying home. Let's do it one more time. Hello, I'm Chuck Humphrey, stationed on board the USS Chicago. The Constellation vote concerns everybody in this city. I'm going to vote for the Constellation to stay home. The Constellation vote concerns everybody in this city. I'm going to vote for the Constellation to stay home. I was stationed on board the USS Constellation. I would urge all San Diegans to consider the brutal realities of the air war in Indochina and then vote to keep the Constellation home for peace. Hey, I'm stationed aboard the guided missile destroyer Parsons. I'm going to vote yes to keep the Constellation at home, and I urge others in this city to do likewise. I'm a former naval lieutenant and naval aviator, I'm going to vote yes on the Constellation vote for the Constellation to stay home. I'm going to vote for the Constellation to stay home. This war has been going on for 10 years, and we've never been asked what we think. This is our opportunity for our voices to be heard. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for being there. And the word tonight is dialogue. And if you have teenagers, that's something you've had to learn recently. That's all very much. Is I don't take all those military. I need some of that. Yeah? Yeah. 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 I'd like to vote the Constellation vote this morning. Vote the Constellation vote? Larry Gage. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to vote the Constellation vote this morning. Yeah, well, I didn't go back to Zen, huh? I'm trying, I'm trying to keep them going this time. How about voting? Maybe it'll help. Maybe we'll get more than nobody does. Uh, Stay. Okay. Constellation vote. And you're a military dependent? Yeah. All right. Stay. If you'd like the consolation yeah. to stay home, vote I, yes. If you want I, it to be, vote no. I want it to stay home. That's yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> check active duty member of the military in San Diego area if you'd like to vote. They need it, send it. I mean, all has been done is the, is the most simple of con jobs about the, about the war. 
I mean, that ship's going to sail out with six million pounds of pounds of armaments on it, and it's going to drop over a hundred million pounds before it ever comes home. Now, that's a war that's going on. And it may not be a war in Washington, D.C., but it's sure a war in San Diego Harbor, and it's even more sure a war in Vietnam. And we found that so many other people feel the war is a dead issue, that it's over. This is a unique situation, not only because it's happening in San Diego, but because, here again, uh, someone feels the war is not over. What made you decide to get involved in this straw vote movement? What do you hope to accomplish by having this straw vote? Realistically speaking, do you think this straw vote will have any influence on the Navy's plans for the sailing of the Constellation? What kind of results have you been getting here today? I notice many people go by you and don't sign anything. What about that? Uh, uh, Shit it. can't help. Do sure. you think Constellation staying here will help freedom? It sure would. Throughout the entire world. Now, the states say we cut people's fingers off. I've seen people's feet cut off by the con. I said, you want to ask that one. That's Boom them, give them hell. Who do you think is furnishing the goddamn fit me? Doesn't mean anything. All right. Right. Right? I'm a patriotic United States of citizen, and I'm a patriotic man. And the question occurred to me, if, in fact, these men, these old men, these women, these children represent, quote, the enemy, and they're out to kill our boys, and if we are, in effect, then fighting men, women, and children who are trying to kill us, are we fighting on the right side? Because, assumably, we're there to gain freedom for these same men, women, and children. And to say that you have to follow orders, you're on the ship, you follow orders. I got, you just uh, court martial Lieutenant Kelly. You don't just follow orders. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the call. Okay, we'll go to another line in one minute. To bring on a popular vote of protest against the return of an American aircraft carrier to Indochina. A report from ABC's Dick Shoemaker. The U.S. Constellation is a fighting carrier. The lead decks are planes to bomb North Vietnam. But now it's the ship that's under attack by war protesters who don't want her to go back to Southeast Asia. Their weapons in this war are unusual. A light plane that flies over the city with a banner asking people to throw them back to sea. There were also hundreds of t-shirts, thousands of bumper stickers, and of course the ballerine. For the last four days, young people have been stopping civilians and sailors on the street asking them to vote whether the carrier should go back to war. So far, the protesters claim to have collected over 20,000 ballots, most of the votes apparently against the ship. The campaign reportedly is costing $50,000. Much of the money raised in concerts by singer John Baez. I was against, the, just primarily against the war in Vietnam, you know. I said, well, this war here is right wrong. This is right here, and I got to think about it. I said, why should the common man go around dying and spilling his blood, having his life ruined for some man who's sitting in Wall Street or Moscow or someplace and, and doing it? I said, no, we ain't going to do it. It's time, you know, it's time mankind said no. It's so plain, you know, it just blows your mind every time you go on there, they're loading 500 pound bombs, you know. And then the chaplain comes over at night and blesses you for doing it, you know, this bullshit. Man. You know, we're America, you know, we're never wrong. My country right or wrong in the American dream, you know. I forgot what the American dream is all about. 
as far as the body count in Vietnam. It's true. She was listed as an enemy wounded when she was 11 months old. Oh, yeah, it's just a camera, sir. It's not going to hurt you. Not like a big gun. <laughs> right. Come on. to talk about. But before I talk about that ship, I think there's some more fundamental things that we have to look at first. There's a set of words that we all use and we all want. There are words like peace and justice and democracy and freedom. All of us use those words day in and day out because those words are the things that all of us want to be. And instead of being peaceful and just and democratic and free, what we've become is the burners of children. Not because if you went around this country and stopped people and asked them, do you want to burn children, you would get a yes. No one would say yes to that. But because we live in a country that spends 70% of its tax dollars on weapons. We live in a society that's decided it gets to dictate the terms that other people live in. And we live in a society that makes profits, and war is good profits. And there's lots of oil and there's lots of minerals in Southeast Asia. And if you have to burn children in the way, it doesn't show up on the dividend sheet. And one of the tools that's transformed us is sitting in San Diego Harbor right now, and it's got a big number 64 on its side. And it's called an attack aircraft carrier. But an aircraft carrier can't give us peace and can't give us justice and can't give us freedom and can't give us democracy. And if those are the things we want, then we have to find tools to get them with. And an aircraft carrier isn't one of those tools. Just like you wouldn't try and sew a patch onto your pants with a wrench, you don't try and make peace with aircraft carriers because they won't do the job. That <laughs> for 10 years, the government has been waging a war. Now, in those 10 years, they've never bothered to ask any of the people who have to wage it, or any of the people who have to pay for it, or any of the people who have to suffer from it whether or not they wanted that war. Now, I don't know about you, but after 10 years of waiting to be asked, I figure if you're going to get asked, you would have been asked by now. Which doesn't mean you're not supposed to tell. It means you have to tell. It means all of us have to take that word democracy that we use and take it seriously and say, hey, you know what? That big ship with the 64 on its side belongs to us. It doesn't belong to Richard Nixon and Melvin Laird. And understand if you want the ship to sail, that when it sails, it sails as a death warrant for thousands of people in the world. And it doesn't sail as something that does something for us. It sails as something that destroys precisely those things that all of us need very badly. It destroys our peace, and it destroys our justice, and it destroys our liberation, it destroys our democracy, and it destroys our freedom. We need those things. We need them very badly, because none of us are going to be able to survive in this world unless we get them. So we must go out to get them. And we can go out to get them by standing up and raising our voices. Because if you don't stand up and say it, you're never going to be heard.